information that was hard coded previously, and we parameterized it by that information so we could change those assumptions. Okay. Now, what we're going to be doing is using that with controls. Okay, we're going to be using the flexibility of using, having the parameters to associate controls with this model. Now, one thing I want to break down, though, is, is something we've been glossing over before. So if you go to simulation, if you go to the experiment, and you go click on the button, you may have wondered why that button is there when you run the model, but you kind of took it for granted. Well, what is that button actually doing? Well, you can see if you click on the button, there's actually some information about the button. One thing is it says, okay, under what condition is it enabled? Under what condition can you press that button? Is it pressable? And second of all, when you press it, what does it do? What, what's undertaken? You see here it somehow tells it to run, and it somehow tells it to display what's on the screen associated with the kind of main class. So it basically says, hey, go present what the, the presentation associated with the main class. That's kind of what that's doing. Um, the run is the key thing that it's actually running the model and then it's visualizing it. So what we're going to do is start adding components like buttons, like sliders, like checkboxes to this. So we can see how to build up a user interface. We can see how to build up elements for the user to control visually to change the assumptions. Okay, so um, the button is just the first of them. That, that's kind of put there automatically. But my point is that that's just one of many controls. And so if you go over to the palette, over here on the right hand side, you'll notice that um, there's a, uh, a, set of, um, a set of controls here. Um, you, can, you can see them along here under the control tab. And um, you'll notice there's a button, a checkbox, edit box, radio button, sliders, now, some of these ones towards the end are only available in professional edition. So we're not going to be using all of them, but we're going to be using um, a couple of them uh, in showing how you, can, how you can make them work to good effect. Um, so I'd like you first to drag from a slider, that's the fifth one down over here. I'd like you to drag that onto the, to the screen there, onto the, the canvas, okay? Um, yeah. Oh, um, no, I did not post them. Thanks. Oh, okay. Um, right. Uh, yeah. Um, might be able to post them during a, a break or something like that. But uh, apologies for that. Um, okay. So um, slider. What you see is when you drag the slider over. This is a bunch of settings that can be set at design time. The orientation, vertical or, or horizontal, if you tweak those, you should see it kind of uh, change its, uh, its aspect. Um, minimum value, maximum value, default value, conditions under which it's enabled, and what action to undertake when its value changes. Okay. Um, but more than this, there's a, and, and this is actually due to recent versions of any logic, it wasn't there originally, you'll see there's a, a checkbox that says link to, okay? That allows you to very straight, a, a very, very simple way to, to have it stay synchronized with the value of a parameter, okay? So when you change that, um, you, can, you can have it automatically adjust uh, a value of a corresponding parameter. Okay, so, um, what I'd like you to uh, to do here is is to go to the general tab. You can also do it in the parameters tab. And for population size, where it used to say 100, where did that 100 come from that it said there, by the way? I mean, just to kind of demystify this, if we look back here, it said population size of 100. Where did this come from? Where did it magically get that value 100? What? Sorry? Yes, it was in main, in fact, when we set population size, we set default value. So that's where it got that from. If we had set default value of 1,000, it would have been 1,000 there. 
What we're going to do here instead is for in an experiment, instead of having 100 as population size, we're going to use put an expression there. Remember, these are just they're just expressions of value into values. It could be a value itself, 100, or it could be a, a much more complicated expression. Here we're going to use a modestly complicated expression. And if it's going to be slider population size, that's the name of that slider, dot get int value. Okay, that gets the current value of the slider as an, as an integer. Okay. Um, so whatever value that slider has as set by the position of that little thing, that slider on it, um, that little uh, element on it, uh, we're going to use that value for the population size. Okay. So in other words, when this, when a person goes and presses this button, it's going to go create the main class with these assumption about exposure and this assumption called population size. And to get the population size, it's going to run this little thing and it's going to get the value of that slider, the current time. Okay. Okay. So, um, so uh, this is what I for the slider. These are the settings I had: a minimum value of one, a maximum value of a thousand, and a default value of a hundred. Okay. So the slider, we're kind of setting it to go between one on the left-hand side and a thousand on the other, and with a default of a hundred. Okay. So here we're setting up a little user interface, and if you run the model now, you should see something like that. Okay. Um, and we can pull around this slider, the, the little uh, element on the slider. Uh, pull it left, pull it right, and have different assumptions about population size. We can change it as much as we want. The one that will matter is the one that's in place when we press this button. Because it's at that point that it's going to go create the main class. And uh, so if we have it set to a large value, we might get something like that. If we have, by contrast, if we have it set to a very small value, you might get something like that. Okay. So, in short, what we've created is a visual way for the user to adjust the population size. Um, now, it's a little bit opaque right now because we don't know the exact population size, but we're going to work on on making it a little bit clearer. Um, so, in short, to be clear here. We have this slider. We put it onto our palette here, and it has some properties. And we set some of these properties up front. In fact, we put some values there during design time. Like what the maximum value is, the minimum, the default, and and then when it's when this code is running, when when the when 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 this thing comes up. Um, when we press this button, it's going to use this value for the population size, and it's reading that from the slider. So that's that's actually while well, it's running just before we run the model when we go to press that button. Does that make sense to people? So the slider has some values while the thing is running. It has some general properties we set at design time, and then it has some values um, that we use at um, at runtime. To, uh, to parameterize our model, to, to set the appropriate value for population size. So large, small, we can change those assumptions visually. Um, OK, so to make this clear, we're going to add some additional controls of sorts, elements of sorts, visually. So one thing we might want to add is, for example, a bit of text to describe what this thing is. After all, if someone sees it right now, they don't even know what that slider is for. So we could go over to presentation, drag some text over, and 